Welcome to February's Lico Challenge. Today's problem is longest harmonious subsequence. We define a harmonious array as an array where the difference between its max and min is exactly 1. Given the, an integer array, we turn the length of its longest harmonious subsequence among all possible subsequences. Now, subsequence is an array that can be derived from the array by deleting some or no elements without changing the order. Here with this example, the longest harmonious sequence is going to be 3, 2, 2, 2, 3 with a length of 5. Uh, we can also see that 1, 2, 2, 2 counts as a harmonious subsequence, but that's only a length of 4. Uh, here with this example, um, 1, 1, 1, 1, we might think at first, oh, this should be a length of 4, but actually this is 0 because the min and max value are both 1s and the difference is going to be 0, not 1. So here there's, only gonna be, there's not going to be a subsequence that counts. Okay, so if we did this straightforward brute force, that's actually not that bad, right? We start at the first position, and what should count in here as something that would be a harmonious subsequence? Basically, uh, a number of 2 and a number of 0, right? So this number plus 1, minus 1. Um, if we check to go down our array and see, hey, does a 0 or 2 exist? Uh, if we see a 2, then we could say, yes, let's start counting up how many 2s and 1s we can find from this point. And same thing with the 0. If we see a 0, we'll say, OK, great. How many 1s and 0s do we have? And we can just do that uh, for this sequence and then start at the second position, do the same thing, so on and so forth, until we find our longest subsequence. So that would work, but it's very inefficient. Could we do this in one pass? Could we do this like uh, greedily, right? Because you normally with these problems, you want to think greedily. Now, the problem. Uh, with greedy solution or here with this greedy solution is we basically want to move through our array and once we get our information like forget about it right but you can see that's kind of an issue here because once we get to like two we need to know how many ones and how many threes have we seen before uh, and that is hard to carry over because we don't know how many we're going to have so just having one integer being carried over doesn't make sense we have to have some sort of hash right so let's do that. Let's start off by thinking about how we could store our information here. And the very first approach I went with was, all right, well, let's think about if we had a lookup of some sort. I'm going to call it C. And we'll make this a default dict and integers as its value. So for n in nums, what do we want to check? Well, you can think about these subsequences as two numbers, right? And they're going to be, have a difference of ones. And let's just create a a key where we'll say all right n and n plus one this is going to be one of the keys as well as n minus one n this is also another key uh, so we will use this as a key and just increase however many times we can possibly see the these pairs uh, so if we had like our initial example here uh, we might see that we get these pairs and we can see that 2 and 3 has a length of 5 right so that would be our answer you can see that um, I think 1 and 2 had a length of 4 so we just return the max of these and that would be it right well uh, initially you might think that but there's an issue here where what if we have all ones right and the problem with all ones is we create ranges of 1 and 2 with 0 and 1 with length of 4 but these actually don't exist because zeros and 2s aren't inside of our number uh, so we need to account for that as well. We could just do it straightforward. And uh, what I'll do is create a set of all the nums. And what we'll do is just look, go through our, our hash and say, all right, if these are two keys of tuple, right? So if the first value is in the set and the second value is in the set, then we know that um, this key can count. So we will store that value in some sort of output. So we can start with an output of zero and we'll say store the max of the output and uh, value as long as they both exist. And after that, we just return our output. So would this work? Let's take a look. And it does. So we account for these situations where um, we have all one values and we can't count that as a harmonious subsequence. Now, can we do better than this? Um, 
Yeah, well, if you think about, start thinking about this a little bit more, one of the things we might realize is, even though they imply that the order matters, it actually doesn't. Like, if we sorted this, the answer comes out to be the same. Um, and because the difference can only be one, like, if we count it, accounted for the three up front or at the very end, it doesn't really matter. Like, what we check for is these two pairs, an n and an n plus one, and basically what we're doing is just summing up the number of times they appear. As long as both these numbers are inside there, then we just count up, like sum up the two, and that's actually going to be the length. So rather than using this default dictionary, why don't we just use a counter object? We'll just count up all of our nums, and rather than having a set here, uh, we'll move through our value, and what we'll do is say, hey, this key the, is the k, k plus 1 also in our counter object, because we have to make sure that both these numbers exist. And if they do, then all we can all we need to do is just um, add the, the value for k and add the value for k plus 1. And that would give us the same answer. Um, time complexity-wise, it's the same, but um, it ends up being a little cleaner and a little bit faster. Um, we can even go further here and do this in a one-liner. Uh, what I'll do is, let's see, I'll create a list comprehension. I'll say if k plus 1 in c, uh, then we will add up these two like this. And we'll just return the max from this list here. And this would work as well, but we also need to account for uh, when there's a zero, because this could easily return a uh, no value. So we'll have to account for that by adding a zero here. So let's make sure this runs. And this should work as well. It's the same thing, but it's just a, it's actually a two-liner, I suppose. But hey, that's pretty cool. All right, thanks for watching my channel. And remember, do not trust me. I know nothing.